is Rex Patrick, Central Alliance Senator and key crossbench senator. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Firstly, the story with Gladys Liu. I'm sure you've seen the interview last night with Andrew Bolt and uh, the fact she couldn't remember this association with a government... Got Chinese government backed association for 12 years. Surely this is a serious cause for concern. Uh, look, it is a very serious cause for concern. We must put it in context. Last year, the government put through a legislation in respect of uh, foreign influence, uh, and that clearly is uh, those laws were targeted at making sure that there wasn't political interference or covert political interference in this country. Uh, uh, Duncan Lewis, the outgoing head of ASIO, uh, last week said that uh, foreign influence is an, is a, an existential uh, threat. Uh, here we've got an MP where questions have been raised and they need to be answered. Uh, in my view, what has to happen is uh, Ms Liu needs to make a statement to the parliament. Uh, as much as I respect Sky, uh, uh, yeah. she ought to make a, a statement to her colleagues in the House. But, but actually, I think also the Prime Minister should seek some advice from ASIO in respect of the allegations that have been made. Now, what would she say in a statement that would satisfy you? What could she possibly say? Well, I think that what she said last night uh, to Andrew Bolt was simply not, uh, not convincing and she really does need to think long and hard about uh, the, her past connections and she needs to be open and upfront about what, uh, what occurred. And I also think she needs to stand up very strongly uh, on issues like the South China Sea and clearly state, uh, articulate the Australian position on, uh, in relation to that. If she does stand up in the parliament and reiterate what she said to Andrew Bolt, say, I didn't know I was a member of this organisation, my bad, is that enough or do you back Labor's call that she needs to stand down? Well, once again, I think uh, the Prime Minister needs to seek some advice from ASIO. These are matters that are best handled by ASIO and perhaps less by parliamentarians. Now, you've been doing some negotiating this morning about uh, the bill that's supposed to be targeting vegan activists, but there are concerns that if we do stop that carriage service of... Uh, sorry, that we just stop those activists using a carriage service like Facebook, that that could hamper press freedoms, and you've been fighting for that? Yeah, look, there are... First and foremost, we do in no way support the idea that multiple people enter a property uh, trespass and intimidate uh, people. We have uh, all, every respect for lawful protest. Uh, there are some issues with the bill that we are talking to the government with, uh, to Jackie Lambie and to the Labor Party, trying to find uh, some uh, sensible modifications to the bill. One of them relates to journalism. Uh, so there's a reverse onus of proof, for example, for journalists reporting on matters related to, uh, you know, to an event on a farm. Uh, that the journalist has to prove that they are indeed a journalist, and that just seems uh, 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 an unreasonable burden. The normal situation would be the prosecution would have to prove that you're not a journalist. That, that's an example of one, one change that we would be seeking. So if you don't get those changes, will you block the bill? Uh, look, we will uh, work uh, with the government with the view of uh, getting uh, some amendments through, and they are working with us. Uh, look, Things are made a lot more difficult when the Labor Party says we're going to propose amendments, but if we don't get them through, we'll simply pass the bill. It removes all leverage that uh, even uh, the, uh, Jackie Lambie and Central Alliance has over the government, and it's just not how you play poker. Uh, not that uh, Central Alliance supports gambling in any form, but, but uh, you know, it, it, the Labor Party have been... Uh, not, haven't been performing in respect of uh, any conviction. Uh, you know, there's a number of things where they've stood up for a particular uh, principle, and we've agreed with them, but then when it come, came to the crunch, they, uh, they voted uh, with the government. Uh, then simply revealing your hand, uh, it just... It's, it's like there's something missing out of, uh, the, out of the party. They're not playing the game very well. You have that leverage, though. If you and Sterling Griff got together, you can block it. So uh, not if Labor's supporting. Oh, and that's, that's the difficulty. Yeah. So if Labor signal to the government that they will support, uh, even if their uh, amendments don't go through, it really uh, leaves us in an awkward position, or in, in fact it removes all leverage that we have. Working together uh, with Labor, we could actually get uh, a good outcome. There are some areas in this bill where... And Labor have moved some good amendments, and we're looking very closely at them, uh, where we get a better law passed through the Parliament. And just finally, um, you've been pushing for 
the, these restrictions on flammable cladding coming into Australia? Are you satisfied with the support you're getting from Labor on that? Uh, look, I think Labor will uh, support that. We, we've introduced a bill into the parliament that's, that says no more flammable cladding to come into the country. There's some real difficulties uh, where we end up seeing cladding on the outside of buildings and putting flammable cladding on the outside of multi-storey buildings is like wrapping them in petrol. Uh, what can happen is you can have false certification at the border, you can have uh, proper uh, certification but the builder picking the cheaper material uh, and indeed when you get to uh, finally surveying the building, the surveyors can't tell the difference between uh, uh, flammable and non-flammable cladding. So there are just so many places in the chain where you can end up with a very dangerous product in a building. Uh, it's been five years, almost five years, since the La Crosse fire. The state governments have done nothing in relation to this. this the Commonwealth must now exercise a, a power uh, in, uh, uh, in order to protect uh, public safety uh, and uh, stop this material coming into the country. Rex Patrick, we know you're busy on sitting week, so I appreciate you taking the time to come up and speak to us. Thank you very much.